You are not gonna believe this story. Freaking pissed. Someday I'm gonna look back and think that I'm gonna laugh at this. I'm making this video because right now I'm gonna have about 10 to 12 hours a week of a hole in my schedule where I'm not gonna be able to ride for a long time. I've gotta do something. Secondly, I am hoping that this turns out well and I get back into cycling with no problems and someone can learn from this. Let me tell you the story. So I was just finishing off a rest week. About once a month, I will take the whole week and do very little riding. And so I wasn't like overtrained or anything like that. And I gotta say, in the last couple months, I've been feeling really good. I've been just riding a lot, climbing, just feeling good, feeling fast. So what ends up happening is literally I had three more goals for the rest of the year, things that I wanted to accomplish. At 4.30 in the afternoon on Monday, I signed up for the Mammoth Grand Fondo and I was going to go with Daniel up to Mammoth. It was going to be my redemption <laughs> of last year's Grand Fondo. All right, seriously, man, this is stupid. Why am I doing this? And you know how like on a plane plane ride where when you sign up for something, it's big bold letters, it says absolutely positively no refunds. No matter what, you're not getting your money back. No transfers, no extensions, no refund, unless you buy our insurance. I actually saw that and for a split second, I thought to myself, what do I need the insurance for? An hour and a half later, I was adjusting the last patient in my office. I got up on my toes. I felt an immediate tearing in the back of my leg. As I dropped to the ground, I actually thought two things. As I'm lying there writhing in pain, the patient is actually staring at me going, what's going on? I thought to myself, oh my freaking God. I just tore my Achilles tendon. My other thought was, oh my God, I just signed up for the Grand Fondo an hour and a half ago. At first was really scared. I couldn't walk on the leg. In my office, I'm on the second floor, the elevator was broke that day. How convenient. I literally got on my butt, scooched my way downstairs into my car, and I, I had this terrible gut feeling that I, I thought something was seriously wrong. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to document what's going on on this healing process. Hopefully you can learn some things. Hopefully this turns out well. Unfortunately, as a doctor of chiropractic, I know what this injury is and I know that uh, it may not be good, but we're going to hope for the best. But I am so Right now I'm in the pissed off phase. So the first week I'm gonna tell you exactly what I did and what I did not do. So that maybe if something like this happens to you, I could help. Number one, the first thing is I didn't know whether I tore my Achilles tendon. I kind of suspected I tore my soleus muscle, which is a muscle under the big muscle of your calf or my calf muscle. My, my muscle was hard as a rock. And when I say hard as a rock, I mean it was insane how, how tight my, my uh, calf was. This is a little bit controversial, but the first thing I did was I did not ice my leg. And the reason why is because I understand that my body is gonna go through three phases in order to heal this process. And it's going to go through, number one, an inflammatory phase, number two, a repair phase, and number three, a remodeling phase. And I'll explain what these are. Initially, when your body tears something, it, go, it starts to become inflamed. Blood vessels break, and the blood vessels will become destroyed. Blood enters the area. Tissue damage occurs, whether you tear a tendon or a muscle or fascia, those cells of that tissue have water in it, they have uh, enzymes, they have different components, and they will tear and that stuff just goes all over. That is called the inflammatory process. Now, as years have gone by, there has been quite a bit of research to show that things like ice, things like ibuprofen, 
uh, different drugs, cortisone, anti, different anti-inflammatories have been shown to reduce inflammation. There's only one problem. When you stop the inflammatory phase, you inhibit the strength of the next two phases, the repair and remodel phase. So you need inflammation. People talk about how, well, it's inflamed, but it over inflames. The body isn't that stupid, I believe, that it's going to over inflame a, a problem. The strength of the inflammation will set up the next phase of healing, which is the repair phase, and will allow you to remodel it much better. I allowed the inflammation to occur. I did not stop the inflammation with anti-inflammatories because also it's been shown that some anti-inflammatory drugs inhibit the body's ability to mesh things together, which is the repair phase where you want your body to heal. It's kind of like, okay, you take a drug or you do something that reduces inflammation, but then long-term, you want to mend things together and those drugs inhibit that from occurring at, it, at the body's best ability. So I did not ice, I did not take anti-inflammatories, thus I just allowed the pain to occur. I could live with pain and that's the first thing that I did. Now at this point in the first week, I did not know what the hell happened to me. Again, I wasn't sure if I tore the tendon, tore the fascia, it's a bad charley horse, strained the muscle, it wasn't a tear. I know enough to poke around with my hand and what I noticed was my Achilles tendon was still attached. Sometimes, you know, that's not the greatest way to examine a patient is just by touching it, but it was a good sign. So at least I know I didn't have a complete tear of the Achilles tendon. Very often when you have a complete tear of the Achilles tendon, you will notice that the tendon is gone, that there's swelling, that sometimes there's really bad bruising near the heel. And I didn't notice that. So I was thinking to myself, hoping to myself that, okay, here's the thing, Ace, it's not the Achilles tendon, or if it is the Achilles tendon, it's only a partial tear. Also, when it did happen, I didn't hear a pop. I felt tearing, I felt ripping, but I didn't hear a pop. And usually, most people that tear their Achilles tendons, they hear like a pop. They, they feel as though someone hit them with a shovel or a knife in the back of their heel. Mine was more in the middle part of the calf, and so I thought, soleus. And I just, for the first day or two, I actually thought to myself, okay, maybe it's just a maybe it's just a strain. Maybe it's just a very severe strained muscle, but there was a problem. I was unable to push down my toes. I was able to wiggle my toes, which again, sometimes if you know too much, you start, you know, the worst doctor is when you doctor yourself, right? But uh, I was able to wiggle my big toe. I was able to wiggle my my other toes. So I was thinking, okay, flexor hallucis longus is okay, tibialis posterior is okay, flexor digitorum uh, longus, okay. And I thought, oh, this is not good. The best way to diagnose a tear, other than the physical exam, which gives you 90% of your information, but it's that 10% that kind of isolates it, was I was going to, decided literally the next day, I gotta get an MRI. The place that I normally send patients to get MRIs it was a place called Grossman Imaging in the town ahead of me, and I've been sending patients to that place for almost 30 years. In the past, I have had numerous MRIs on myself, and what I do is when I need an MRI on myself, I just call them up and say, hey, it's Dr. Story, can I get an MRI of my shoulder? Can I get an MRI of my knee? Can I get an MRI on my foot? And they're like, yeah, no problem, Dr. Story. Just come on in next, tomorrow, that type of thing. You know, when you refer patients to a place, there's some, there's some perks you could refer yourself. I call up the place. Essentially, they won't allow me my self-referral. They're like, okay, you can't refer yourself. You got to get a doctor to do it. I'm like, I am the doctor. I, I refer patients to you all the time. It turns out the Grossman Imaging got bought out by Radnet. All the employees, they didn't know who I was. I was just another number. Get in line at the back, buddy. So they, they want to schedule me two, three weeks out. I need an MRI now. I call different places. It turns out Radnet has bought everyone out. 
It's like a total monopoly. Yeah, get in the back of the line, buddy. So I call up a chiropractor friend of mine. I say, hey man, you need to just write me a note, get me an MRI. He gets me a place, literally the next day, I get an MRI. It pays to know people. Here's the good and bad news. He calls me up and he goes, dude, holy cow, you just tore your gastroc. The gastroc is the, the main part of the calf muscle, the big part. And part of me was like, what? Are you kidding? The gastroc? I mean, of all things. And then I thought to myself, thank God it wasn't the Achilles. So now the next thing is, what am I doing for it? Well, I can't walk without feeling like that's going to tear even more. So basically, I'm non-weight bearing. I'm still not icing. And I'm still not taking any type of anti-inflammatories. But here's what I'm doing. Number one, in my office, I am very lucky that I have this because... If you don't, you need to go somewhere and pay someone to do this. But I have what's called a class four cold laser. And what this does is it creates a tremendous amount of circulation, more blood into the area, and it basically gets all the bad stuff out of the area. And what I'm trying to do, think of an area that's torn, that's swollen, that's bleeding, and now the blood, because now it's been about seven days, the blood is starting to pool in that area and just stay stagnant. And that's what creates that tension and size difference and swelling. So if you can increase the amount of blood coming in so that the circulation can occur and all those bad things that are torn, the torn pieces of tissue, uh, the enzymes that are in there, the uh, swelling, of course, if you can circulate it, you're going to, first of all, reduce the amount of stasis of the bad stuff, which is the swelling. And you are going to create a situation where you're bringing more nutrients to the area, more oxygen to the area, more blood to the area. And that's what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to create a situation where in order to heal tissue, now that we're starting... We're still in the inflammatory phase, but it's starting to, the body wants to repair this. But what it needs to repair is it needs nutrients, it needs oxygen, and you need to get that information to that air, that torn area. So I am lasering the torn muscle. And fortunately, you don't have to pay a copay when you do treatment on yourself. I am doing it three times a day. So three times a day, I am lasering the tissue. Now, you're unlikely to be able to do that in a normal doctor's office if you're a patient, but even if you were to do it every day or three times a week, it's amazing how well cold laser therapy can work. And we're not talking about the laser therapy or the red light things that you buy off Amazon for $20. The laser I have was like 20 grand. So this is a good laser. If you can find someone... It, it, it can help with healing. Um, the second thing that I'm doing is I'm doing very light massage. This hurts, and I'm not doing deep tissue work. This is very superficial, but if, you, if a tear is right here, I'm gonna do deep tissue work deeper around the area. So I'm doing a lot of work on the soleus muscle. I'm doing a lot of work below the area and above the area to again, create a good circulation. But right over the tear, I'm doing it very superficial and only to the tolerance of my pain. And I'm doing that three times a day. Now, the third thing is I'm not trying to put too much weight bearing on my muscle because every time I try to stand up and use the calf, if I try, for example, to just gently get up on my toes, I get that feeling right now that the tearing sensation is occurring and I don't want to tear it more. So I'm, I'm on crutches right now, uh, particularly at my office, but uh, just around the house, I'm trying to use a cane because cut, crutches, nobody talks about this, but crutches, they kind of hurt your underneath your armpits and it's just very uncomfortable and you can't carry anything with crutches, so I'm trying to use a cane as best I can. And I've noticed this too, that if I walk like a crab sideways, side to side, I'm not using the calf because I'm not trying to push off my toe. So I can kind of get around the house a little bit, uh, just walking like a crab. That's how I get up and down stairs. But the fourth thing that I'm doing this week that has been beneficial 
is doing range of motion, passive range of motion, or very light range of motion. What that means is I don't want to create a situation where I get a DVT or a deep vein thrombosis. That's another complication when you have problems that are in the calf. I've had lots of patients that have had that, and that's no joke as well. That can actually kill you. So that's where a clot starts to form in your leg and then it travels up your body if it dislodges and can get into your lungs and cause a problem there. It can get into your heart, it can get into your brain, you can have a heart attack, a stroke, that type of thing. So that's bad. So I am uh, creating a situation where I'm doing range of motion. So I just take my foot and just to the tolerance of pain, I'm not pushing it past pain, I'm moving my foot back and forth. Now the first four days, I was unable to do this hardly at all. So I would just take, grab my foot and move it back and forth and even just wiggling the toes. You want to create circulation in that calf so that you don't create a thrombosis or a a DVT. So I have been doing that. The other thing that I've been doing is I've been wearing a kind of a a brace, like a compression sleeve around that area because it gives it support and it feels, makes it feel better. So it's less uh, uncomfortable. As far as working out is concerned, I'm a big believer that you got to find something to do. You know, I remember this as a kid, Jack LaLanne said once, you know, you've got over 600 muscles in your body, why don't you use one? (laughs) And I thought that was a funny statement. And what that means is I've noticed in my, in my chiropractic practice that when, for example, a runner hurts their knee or their hip or something like that, they get very depressed. And, or if a swimmer hurts their shoulder, they get very depressed because if that's the only sport that they're doing and it's taken away from them, depression can set in. And it's something people don't talk about, but when you take someone's identity away and you take someone's sport away from them and they have nothing to do, it becomes, the, the pain of the injury is nothing compared to the emotional pain that starts to set in. So what I'm gonna do is, and you'll and you, you'll see this through my videos, is I'm just gonna start working out my upper body. I don't particularly like lifting weights. It's not my favorite thing. But again, I normally ride a bike anywhere between, you know, 10, 12 hours a week on average. And now I have, I'm not riding at all. And I'm gonna need to find something to do. So I think I'm gonna get really good at guitar and I'm gonna start working out my upper body. That's how I'm gonna occupy my time as best I can. And regardless of that, it's uh, it's extremely frustrating. And I realize that this is nothing compared to some injuries that people have had. I know that when you have an injury, Everybody always wants to one-up you and say, oh yeah, well I got this injury or I got, you know, whatever. The inability to ride your bike and be out there with your friends is uh, very frustrating. And so far, it's been only seven days and it really hasn't hit me yet. I really don't, it, it hasn't hit me emotionally yet and I, I'm still kind of in shock. I hope by the end of this video series that this turns out really well. But I think that forever I'm going to be really afraid of getting up on my toes. Hopefully I can get past that mental aspect of it. If you've had an injury and have any words for encouragement for me, holy crap, I need encouragement. So just comment down below. Let me know that you've had an injury worse than this and you got through it. Tell the story, how you got through it. What did you do to prevent depression? That's what I'd like to know. Is what did you do with the time that you spent normally riding that's suddenly gone? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to read uh, your stories. Uh. 
good. Ouch, ouch, ouch. All right. So this is kind of depressing. I'm just gonna cover up my bikes because it's gonna be a long time before I ride them again and just leaving them out, get all dusty and everything like that. Uh, goodbye, my friends.